The murder trial of former Bafana Bafana captain Senzo Miyiwa resumed in the Pretoria High Court this week. Miyiwa was shot dead at the home of his girlfriend, singer Kelly Kamalo, in Phosphorus in 2014. Five men are being tried and face various charges, including murder, attempted murder and armed robbery. They have all pleaded not guilty. I'm Catherine Rice, a multimedia journalist for News24, and you're listening to The Story, where we'll talk to journalists and experts about the biggest story of the week. We're joined by News24 journalist Alex Mitchley, who has been covering this case for us. Thanks so much for your time, Alex. Tell me, a witness who first took the stand in April returned to the stand this week. Who was he and what did he have to say? So the state's first witness in the case was a Sergeant Tabo Musia. He was effectively the first forensic detective to arrive on the crime scene after being called out by a Brigadier Filani in Lovu. What he did there is he took a couple photographs and essentially bagged and tagged the visible evidence, including a hat that uh, allegedly belonged to one of the accused, as well as uh, two bullet projectiles and a bullet jacket. So his evidence before court was just to paint a picture of what evidence had been collected, how it was collected, and how it was stored. As we know, this crime occurred in 2014, and uh, several years later, we're finally at trial. Alex, there have been a number of delays in this case, and even the judge this week raised concerns in the court about wasting time on side issues. Can you tell us about that? Yes, so uh, there, has been, there have been several delays. Delays can be attributed to, a, uh, to multiple issues. The first, of course, is, as we know, the judicial system is overburdened with cases, so it does become very difficult to try and get court time, given that there's so many other criminal cases running at the same time. I do understand that a while ago they were looking to book a whole end block, meaning, you know, to book a court for an extended period of time, and that was unsuccessful, so essentially they had to kind of see where they can get space. There were also delays brought about by uh, defence teams in this matter. For instance, You had the late disclosure of the second docket in this case. Just to give you a bit of background on that, the first docket was registered in 2014 after Miiwa was killed. And that docket is currently before court in which the five accused were arrested and charged with murder, attempted murder and robbery with aggravating circumstances. But then a couple of years later in 2019, two detectives registered a second case a second docket, which is referred to as the second docket. Now, we obviously haven't had sight of the second docket. The second docket is not before court. No one has been charged or arrested in relation to the second docket. But as far as what the court has heard, the second docket comes to different findings and a complete set of different suspects. We do know that uh, the previous defense counsel for four of the accused advocate, Malisela Tefo, said that it is the second docket that should be before court and it is those people that should be charged with Miyiwa's murder. However, earlier this week we had heard that the state has not taken a decision on the second docket and they will wait until the fruition of this trial before taking such decision. However, they're only looking at a charge of defeating the ends of justice relating to the contents of the second docket, not a charge of murder, which tells us that the NPA, the DPP at least, based on the evidence in the second docket, can't see any of those suspects um, being found guilty of murder, but perhaps a case could be made out for defeating the ends of justice. So this disclosure of the second docket, there was a late disclosure to one of the accused. The last accused is represented by advocate Sandili Umshalolo. And because of the late disclosure, she asked for a postponement to be able to study this docket before she can continue with the case. That was one of the delays. Another delay is multiple applications brought by Tefo. You know, he tried to have a trial within the trial held. Then he wanted to argue jurisdiction. And, um, you know, in both those matters, uh, in the trial within a trial, that matter was effectively uh, dismissed because the the state acts as dominus litus, meaning the state will decide 
if and when they are going to call a trial within a trial, then the trial within a trial pertains to the alleged confession statements by two of the accused. Of course, it remains to be seen whether the state even feels that they need to use those confession statements. So they may even end up not using those in which a trial within a trial is not even necessary. Alex, this case has certainly been dogged by conspiracy theories. What are your thoughts on why that is? And just what are the conspiracy theories? I mean, have any of these theories impacted on the trial itself? Yeah, so there certainly has been a lot of conjecture and a lot of conspiracy around around this case. And I think it really has to do with the fact that you have this high-profile person who was murdered in a house in 2014. And, you know, up until 2019, there were no arrests. No one was, in fact, charged and brought to court. There was, of course, a guy who was arrested shortly after the murder. Um, I think he worked at a car wash in the area. And um, it effectively wasn't him. They arrested the wrong person. There was a wrong, there was a, the ID parade um, that was conducted in respect of this person was essentially incorrect and flawed. And I think that's kind of where it started. I mean, you already have a case where uh, it's alleged that the people in the house at the time ID'd this person who turned out to be the wrong person. So I think the conspiracies already started running through that. And then, of course, several years later, all of a sudden you have this announcement that five men have been arrested for the murder of Miwa. And I think that plays a part of that as well. Essentially, the conspiracy theory, and this has already been brought up in court, is that it's believed that Miwa's girlfriend at the time, Kelly Kumalo, was involved. And um, she has already been indirectly accused by a defense team as well of that. As far as the trial is concerned, I don't think these conspiracy theories has impacted the trial itself. We have, of course, seen with cross-examination the idea that um, uh, through the questions asked by the defense, um, you know, they have used this conjecture, these allegations that, you know, evidence was planted and uh, the accused before court were framed and it's a scapegoat. So there's definitely a buy-in from the defense teams that that is exactly what happened. But thus far, they have yet to submit any real evidence to that effect. Of course, we'll have to wait until they um, open their own case to see what it is that they have to justify these theories. And if I may just add that with the first, the state's first witness, uh, some of the testimony has certainly bolstered some of these conspiracy theories in that Sergeant Musia's testimony uh, also conflicted an affidavit deposed by Ndlovo in that uh, discrepancies around whether Ndlovo told him to go to a hospital and didn't give him the address to the crime scene and then whether Ndlovo helped him at the crime scene so there were also those minor discrepancies and um, perhaps issues where Musia testified that he didn't think it necessary to perform gunshot residue tests on the people in the house at the time. It's all those little things that have also kind of uh, um, certainly given credence or, or rather fueled uh, the conspiracy theories that have obviously been rife in this case. We have finished with the first witness. This means we're at the very beginning. We're still in the beginning stages of the trial. So we'll have to see what other witnesses the state brings and what sort of evidence they bring to the table. Alex, you've spoken uh, you know, extensively about the second police docket. Tell me you know, about the accused. They feeling that the state, uh, there's some prejudice there. Can you tell us more about these claims and about uh, a little bit more about that second docket? Well, effectively, the prejudice uh, argument that came up was in respect of the fifth accused, and that was because his defense counsel had only received disclosure of the docket once the trial was already in session. So they basically said, you know, they were unable to prepare. They could have even changed their plea had they been disclosed this docket. And uh, because of that, there's prejudice. But in terms of the second docket, not a lot is known about it. However, we do know that this docket was investigated by two other investigators, and the findings are completely different 
to that of the first docket. As has been mentioned in court by defense teams, the second docket accuses the people that were in the house at the time of being responsible for Miyua's death. This is now according to advocate Malisela Tepo, who was uh, the defense counsel for four of the accused. So what we do know at this point is that there is a second docket, which is quite unusual that there's two dockets for a single case, but there is a second docket. The second docket has a list of findings that differ from the first, and to go with that, an entirely different list of suspects. And what we know further is that the state has not declined to prosecute on the second docket yet. In fact, they've come out to say that they will wait for the fruition of this trial to see what the credibility findings are before they take a decision. That being said, on the second docket, the state is only currently looking at a charge of defeating the ends of justice, which tells us that the DPP doesn't think there is evidence to sustain a murder charge in the second docket. And perhaps it also tells us that the DPP is still confident that the evidence contained in the first docket which is currently before court, will be able to prove that the accused before court are guilty of murder. But Alex, you know, not a lot has come out yet about what actually happened on the day Mayua died. And with these delays, it may take some time before we really get a fuller picture of that. What do we know about what actually happened on that day so far? Yes, certainly. The first, as I said, as I said, the first witness effectively was testifying as to how he bagged and tagged the evidence. Uh, Sergeant Musia did not interview any witnesses. He did not recreate crime scene. He did not follow those events. He was effectively responsible for finding the evidence and bagging it and sending it to, you know, sending it to the evidence registrar where it can be sent out for, for testing. So we ha- we have not yet had witnesses come forward to start giving us a clearer picture. But what we have been told, and what is in the public domain, as per the state's case at least, is that two accused did enter the house, and apparently there was a struggle, and that is when Miyua was shot. It's believed he was shot in the kitchen, and that's of course where some of the projectiles were found. Thereafter, it's understood that Miu was rushed to hospital by some of the occupants in the house. And, of course, we heard testimony that he was declared dead on arrival at the hospital. And we further know, following that, there was a time period before the police were called to the scene, according to some of the testimony that's been before court. But really, as far as what has been before court, that is all we know so far. We know that Senzo was shot in the chest. We are told that there were two of the accused were in the house. And that is about it. Well, Alex, it's certainly going to be very interesting to hear how this all unfolds and what exactly happened. How long do you think it will take until we get judgment in this matter? You know, given the current trajectory of the trial, I imagine we are going to probably sit with this for at least the next year, perhaps even two, if uh, we don't speed up. We we already know that uh, just on the first witness, who, again, just effectively collected evidence, you know, it was a marathon of chief examination and cross-examination. And if the same is going to happen for every single witness that's brought, I imagine this will take, as I said, months, if not years, We, of course, don't even know the full witness list of the state, and we also don't know how many of those witnesses they're expected to call. Well, thank you so much for covering the case for News24. It's something that we will continue to bring our readers. That's all we have time for this week. I'm Catherine Rice. Join us again next week for The Story.